Hey, welcome back to the Choice Podcast. And if you guys are watching on YouTube or one of our video outlets, you can probably see there's a little bit of a difference. Yep. Yeah. Just just a little bit. We changed Slightly. up a set. You guys were busy while Aubrey and I were out playing around. Yeah. And um, yes, you guys you built up a new done? set. Yeah. <laughs> Vacationing. There's nothing wrong with a girl's trip once no. in a while. I'm just no. going to put it out mm. there. We not needed it after spending so much time with you guys. I mean, I'm not yes. saying anything. What? But... I but I'm, saying, saying so. but I'm saying, but I'm saying, just learn. This is how it is. You know what I mean? <laughs> now that you guys, you, you picked your date, mm. <laughs> it's over. It's, it's, Life it's as over. you know it is over. <laughs> okay, but that being said, we also have these new microphones that are yes. going to drive me crazy because I'm not allowed to touch them. <clears throat> yes. And I'm not used to it. I'm used to us wearing a lab. Or <laughs> so we can move around room, more and everything else. And now every time I go to move my hand, I hit the mic and I get yelled at as we were trying to test this out. So I apologize hopefully, if I hit the mic at all during this time. Hopefully the audio is better though with these mics. Okay, hopefully. if you say so. Prior, it was good, but we want to be the best. Okay. We got to be the best, right? Okay. <laughs> all right, but I wow. fidget a lot, so I don't know what's going to happen. But we know, we know you fidget. We're all just I can't use my point. left hand for anything because I'm going to hit the mic. So you just, just got to watch it. You know. Just watch it. I know, but I always go like this. I just my hit my mic. It's just sitting here. Now Aubrey hit her mic. Anything. Stop touching the okay. microphone, Aubrey. Did we start this podcast? Because I really don't know. <laughs> I, yes, we, we did. did. Yes. Oh, yeah, we just rambled. Though. Oh, That's yeah, all we're just rambling. All right. All right, so what are we doing this week? This week, we're talking about early season elk. Okay. And no, kind of elk. Fall elk hunting. Yeah, just, just all of fall. All, all fall. Oh, okay. All of fall. Or at least See, we'll, she's we'll already s- correcting you. Oh, just, I know. Just had to say I'm used it. to that one, though. Because okay. it's going to be in the title, so. Okay. 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 <laughs> well, I mean, I reckon we just start off with kind of going over where and when we're going places this yes. fall for elk. Okay. As well. And we're starting off soon, actually. Soon. Yeah. Very soon. Just a couple... Two and a half weeks or something yes. like that. I have a New Mexico elk tag with top-notch <laughs> outfitters. So that's yeah. exciting. And uh, so, yeah, so Brian Newell, he's mm-hmm. waiting for us. Aubrey's going to go and be my camera girl. Brian, right I'm so sorry. I want to apologize <laughs> oh, we're to have you a blast. We're going to have a blast. Um, we are. Oh, poor mm-hmm. guy. Yep. It's a great time down there. Eddie and I oh, went down there last year. I got yep. my beautiful bull. That family is yeah, beautiful. Oh, they are. They're New just Wells. amazing Price people. Newell's. And I'm, I, right now I know that they're already hunting antelope because <clears> – <throat> We're mm-hmm. filming this. It's in August, and they already got antelope hunters yeah. out there. Yeah, so. everybody's open, and you, you don't need yeah. for antelope. Well, we're leaving this Friday. Yep. Yeah. And we're going to start our antelope season, and then for Table Mountain yeah. breaks yeah. loose. Yes. Everything breaks Scott loose. Scott Angie. Yeah. Yep. yep. And then while Aubrey and I are in New Mexico hunting and filming, um, <clears throat> Dad Ralph here will end up being hunting elk here at home in Colorado mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. with Eddie filming, and then you actually won't be around anyways. You're mm-hmm. going to be in Northern BC yeah. hunting. Mountain goats. <laughs> Mountain goats, yeah, with North River Outfitting. And, um, yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's going to be yeah. way Santa up there. Maria. Yep, you'll yep. have a good time oh, there. I'm excited. I'm so yeah. excited. Yeah. I've been hiking nonstop. So we're going to have, like, four elk hunts done before he gets back. I know. Because yeah. you and I will be in New Mexico, Ralph will be in Colorado, and then we then you flop. flop. Yep. You but and I will be hunting here yes. in Colorado, and you and Eddie will be going to Utah. Clinton Greg, KRO. Yep. Yeah, yep. so Crow Ranch oh, yeah. Outfitter. So we got that going on. And then while well, they're in Utah – you finally come back, <laughs> and you're home for like three days, and then the three of yep. us end up heading to R&K, in Wyoming. In, Wyoming, in Wyoming for elk, with Rob and Blake and all them guys, <laughs> yes. and Dad and Eddie will show up in Wyoming about the same day we do, but then Eddie will come back, and we'll stay there and hunt elk, and then Aubrey and then has a mule deer. Yes, I got a mule deer, so God, that's well, our well, September. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be. We're complaining. We no, love it. No. We thank God every day. Oh, it is the busy all... season, and we've got plenty of elk to chase. So the weather here in Colorado is finally <clears throat> kind of cool. It cooled down for, what, two days? You wake two up days. and you feel like yeah. it's fall. You go outside yeah, and you like, just you breathe in the air. It's 46 like, degrees oh, outside. And oh, phenomenal. it's that time. Love it's that time. It. Yes. And then, of course, this week it's supposed to hit like 90s. 90. Yeah, but except for it's going to be 90 outside in Wyoming while we're hunting antelope. Yeah. So inside that blind, in it's going to be a Anybody ever try those coolers? Do you ever see those coolers they advertise everywhere? It's like a portable air conditioning unit. The ones that go around your neck? No, no. <laughs> this is like a, 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 a cooler. You know, like a cooler, and it's. I think you put ice in and it. And you put ice in it, and there's a fan or something oh. like that. So it blows the cold air out of the cooler from the ice, and it's supposed to cool Wouldn't down. Wouldn't that be cool in an antelope blind? <laughs> It'd make an awful lot of noise. I don't yeah. know if it, I don't. I, I never does seen them on your I mean, I guess if Does it keep your sandwiches cold, too? Yes. Oh, but my gosh. I just want to know about a sandwich. Oh, that's all important. we no, care about. But, but could you picture that, though? Like You know what I mean? In an early season situation, in a blind, you like bring that cooler, turn the air on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah but would it heat up your sandwiches faster like heat up heat up yeah if they're cool in there would it would the cold air get out too fast and then by the end of the day 
Maybe your maybe your fourth or fifth sandwich of the day is fourth or fifth sandwich. Put a little air pump or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. A pan. I don't really know, but I'm just, just curious. Something to try. I, I want, yeah. if, if anybody has experience with that, let us know. Yeah. Because RJ wants to make sure sandwiches stay cold. Yeah. So he wants. And to I just want to be cool, cool in a blind. Mm-hmm. Either way, it'll I be fun. Scott and Angie will get us ready. Tip them yes. on outfitters. Oh, yeah. oh, we'll yeah. be there. They got us covered. Yeah. Actually, we'll be back by for that before this even airs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Whoops. Sure enough. So oh. yeah. Whoops. You'll see it all. On Still let me know. <laughs> Still yeah. let me know because we'll be antelope hunting next year too. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And we'll definitely be using it if they do work. Yes. Because yes. right now Absolutely. we just use those little fans, like the yeah. handheld. You put them around your neck. Or they have like they open up. Mm-hmm. And we should probably also say because this new area that we're doing our podcast in. The dogs are here, <coughs> Captain yes. and Leo. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah, because they're on the ground. You may not be able to see them and right you'll now. you'll hear both of them snoring um, here soon. Leo is snoring <laughs> right now, which is why I just wanted to bring that up. I don't know if they can hear it or not, <laughs> but it's not someone making some weird noises. There's actually Leo is snoring on the floor yes, right here. Yes, and Captain's will just, probably end up moving around. They'll move. They'll, they'll probably bump the cameras at some point yeah. or jump In up on top of us yes. and knock her. But like, as you so, know, yeah. we're a family, and the, those are part of our family just like yep. yours. <laughs> and they're very happy to be sitting here with us. They're content. Okay, so let's really? talk about elk hunting. So we're talking. Yeah, we're Did talking we about talk elk. about elk hunting last time. We talked about a little bit uh, of everything. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Last time we went over antelope, early season, going into elk, everything else, I believe. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's been a while. I don't remember. All right. I'm not a professional. No, nor am I. <laughs> <laughs> we're in this together. <laughs> yes, we're, we're learning we're together. We're in it on the long yeah. haul. We'll figure it out. <coughs> I bumped my microphone again. Sorry. Whoops. Oh. Good job. I we'll know. F- we oh. will get this set. We promise. Uh, Eventually. Maybe. Okay, let's kick it off. Okay. We got Scott. He asks, why do you never see hunting shows hunt elk out of tree stands? We do. Oh, we, we do. do. I've Scott, shot an elk mm-hmm. out of a tree stand. Utah. Yeah. And it's not just Utah. It's here, Colorado. There's a yep. lot of, especially early season. Yeah, actually, yeah last, last fall, fall right you guys, here. you oh, yeah. almost got Tree them. stands right. or ground blinds. Yep. Yep. You, you know, you take advantage of the, the biggest draw at that time is water. <laughs> so, so I, you know, may, maybe you didn't see them, but yes, sir. And we're going back to KRO and who knows? You might be sitting in a water hole. You know, well, and, and that's Brian. the thing is, is, I don't know. Yeah. is that usually like we're hunting tree stands for elk usually earlier in the season because yeah, it is water holes <laughs> because they, they need water. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's what they're going to do. They're so patternable before <laughs> at it that goes point, crazy. I right. will admit, though, I would much prefer spotting and stalking. Oh, yeah. In well, you like to chase pure them, so rut, it's screaming, calling, you yeah. get in, you call But if they're not talking oh. early season, oh, no, that's you got to figure yeah. out where they're at. They're going to be at the water, yeah. and they could be at the water. And if it's hot, I mean, you know, you... Yeah. Honestly, you just checked our spy points, and our spy points were showing the elk were like all day long going <laughs> yeah. back and forth. So, I mean, it some had are even losing their velvet, yeah. velvet already. Like 10 something, yeah. one almost two o'clock in the, or th- almost three o'clock in the, in the afternoon, and then right at dusk. What so. did you just say before that? That she smiled and giggled at you? I didn't hear that. No, I said some are also leave, losing their velvet already, too. Oh, yes. Okay, sorry. <coughs> yep. I thought you were making already some kind of smart oh, no, no. comment, no. and I just thought I'd double check it. Yeah, no, no. because you saw a hard horned one. Last yesterday, yeah. yesterday. Yeah. yesterday we got a video of it yeah wow that's crazy <laughs> it's crazy. awesome so excited. Yes. we should okay. probably try to catch them and spray the velvet rack on them so that they stay so in stays, velvet stays so they in stay velvet. in velvet yeah, there you go yeah i'll yeah. grab yeah, i'll grab onto the bases i'll throw it yep. to the ground you start spraying we'll, 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 we'll have so aubrey get on the middle and yep. make sure she holds the neck down oh. And I'll just film it. Just like a calf. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> one of us are going to die. Yeah. And <laughs> one of us. And, no, and, and the game warden's going to come and arrest all of yes. us for yeah. harassing yeah. wildlife. Yeah. Let's, oh, yeah. let's exactly. not do that, okay? Yeah. 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 Okay. We'll say, look it. He still got his velvet. <laughs> yeah, but honestly, we do <laughs> hunt tree stands. It just depends on the time. A lot of times TV shows are filming during the rut where you're listening yeah. for them and you're mm-hmm. chasing after them rather than hunting just the water Scott, hole. it's just more engaging. You, 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 yes. you know what I mean? For, foot, for everything, you know, yeah. when you get them bugling and answering. But, uh, you know... Wasn't it You're la- your mic. last year or something <laughs> at RNK? We actually yeah. sat a, a wallows. You, yep. you know what yeah. I mean? We sat That's the other tree yeah. standed, yep. you know, tree stand sat, sat near water holes for a while yep. midday, just hoping <laughs> they didn't cooperate. But still, you know, that strategy does work even in the rut. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. How was that? It was good. Good, good answer. Good answer. Go oh, Aubrey doesn't want to read it. She wants. You're rocking it. Steve asks, how do you get that big of an animal out of the backcountry? A lot of walking. (laughs) Well, yeah, I I mean, honestly, the first and foremost thing you want to do is take care of that animal. Absolutely. You know, open them up as quick as possible, get the esophagus out, because that's where the heat starts to really formulate, right here. So you open all that up, you know, you you do all your deboning. I like to debone, you know, wherever we can. It takes some extra weight out if it's possible, if it's legal. Yep. 
it does make it easier though to carry it out it does. with the bones. Yes, it does. Because you can go ahead and get a stick or something and put a couple quarters <laughs> on it if you don't have your Alps you pack or something, them, you know, and you can grab them better or a couple people can help carry it out like that. But I mean like last fall, um, Ralph shot a cow elk here and <laughs> RJ ended up carrying out Pack like mule. what to two back quarters and a front quarter. Pop, and yeah. you, he said, what that kid do? You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah. And then and Ralph ca- carried the front quarter, the yep. straps, all the extra meat yep. and the tenderloins. The I mean, you guys, you guys really. We got it out in one trip. Yeah, we did. did. Which was good. We did. It was. And it wasn't that far for no, you guys. No, no. To go I mean, and, it wasn't back country. And you, you didn't know, have no. to go uphill. Either. Yeah. Right. So that was Yeah, we that followed the valley all the way down. Yep. But Which helped a lot. You know, and that's the big thing is. Get a good frame pack. Get get a good yes. pack mm-hmm. that you can support a lot of weight and practice with it. Just because walk with it. On. Yeah, walk mm-hmm. walk on. You know, go by some incline, bird feed. decline. Yep. Um, and again, people laugh, but walking sticks. The heavier that pack gets, the better those sticks are gonna. You know, you're you're gonna benefit from. <laughs> um, and you know, of it, course, most of the places that you're hunting elk is also bear country. Yeah. Yep. So if you, if you have to take numerous trips back and forth to get it to back aware. to camp or whatever. Be aware always, you know, and I mean, pepper spray sounds crazy, but you may need pepper spray, especially during archery season. Cause well, you, yeah, because then the, at least you're peppered up as the bear. So you taste you. better yeah. for the bear, but no. <laughs> exactly. But, Maybe they don't but like when spicy you leave, stuff. If no. you have to leave elk meat there while you're taking a load, if you're by yourself right. or only a couple of you and you got to leave meat, you need to make sure you have ropes and throw it up in a tree and put it up high enough that the bear can't come and claim it while you take your first load to camp and then back up yeah. and then you get the rest. Mm-hmm. And then you basically got to do the same thing when you get to camp throw it up in a tree high so a bear can't hopefully get it and that way you can retain all of your yummy meat mm-hmm. you know and the other thing too you know when i did it it was with a compass you, you know what i mean yeah and now with the, all the new apps and the, and the oh, gps's yeah. and everything you could track you can download so, your yeah. map it, yep wherever and you so plan you can hunting. track a, you know create a better track mm-hmm. so you know how the shortest distance to get to where mm-hmm. you're yep. at right that's right. way to follow maybe like, follow those absolutely and again steve right yep yep steve don't Please don't cheapen on the game bags. Those yeah. game bags are, are one of your saviors to keep your meat good and clean. Keep and, the flies and off And airflow and everything. So really go out. You know, we've we've tried a bunch. You know, caribou gear is probably one of the best we've, right. we've ever experienced. Yeah. <laughs> we've got we a bunch of them, and you could wash them. So you make an investment your first year, but when you're done, you, you wash, wash them, them, put them away, you're ready for next year. A big, big plus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. And then, and then the other thing, too, is that as you're hiking it all out, you also need to remember that the last thing that should come out is your cape and your antlers. Yep. Meat should always come out first. Cape and antlers always come out last. That's yeah. just, Here's it another should be little, that way. Real great tip. Here's another one, though, that you, we did. We started doing years and years ago, and that is when you punch your tag, yep. either take, take photos of it on your phone or, you know, even film it with your phone. This way you always have proof. Right, uh, that you tag doing everything yeah. you know by yep. the books. Yep. Absolutely, and honestly, again, if you have that map, if you're out there <clears> hunting <throat> on public land, even if you're hunting with an outfitter, you need to go ahead and mark where camp is, mark where your kill is at, because mm-hmm. where you do that, if something happens later and a game warden calls you and wants to know where you <laughs> shot and where you found that, where you recovered your animal, you have it on your app. I mean, Hunt Stand is a great mm-hmm. app to use. We've been using that one for a bit now. You know, but that way you have everything there. You can mark it. And what's kind of cool is because we can go back to like our, our all of our different maps over the years. And if you look on mine, like you can see years of different places we shot moose points. in the Yukon, elk, and mm-hmm. you know, it's funny. I love it. I love going back there. It's another it's great really thing cool. that I used it for this year. Well, yeah, this early, early this year was uh, my bobcat. Right. Was because oh, yeah. out here in Colorado you seal your cats and I think even bears and everything else out here. Yeah. Uh, so we went to the local game warden and he's like, where, where was the location? You did this, yada, yada, yada. You pull it up and it tells you your latitude, yep. longitude, everything else. And you're ready to rock and roll. Yep. 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 Makes it life a lot really easier. Good. It does. Yeah. Especially if you're somewhere techie, without service. <laughs> there are things we all need to learn mm-hmm. yep. because it does make your life easier. Yeah. And that was a pretty long answer, but I think we hit a whole bunch of things on <clears> there. Yep. So. It, it is. The second you pull that trigger, you hit your release, you let go of that string, however it is that you shoot an elk, you hunt an elk, um, be ready because that's when the fun stops right there. You're going to nah, go recover the animal fun. and you got to carry all that stuff it's out and fun. it will definitely be worth it. Make sure that you are ready for that mental game. All right. Moving on to the next woo-hoo, question. Woo-hoo. All right. And this one. Aubrey's trying Aubrey, to pass Aubrey's it on. Trying to pass oh, it on. She's, she's like, and, read, this, she's read this one. I know. I know. I'm like, mm, and, and then as she's doing oh. that, I have Leo knocking my table. Yeah. Oh, I know. That's holding my mic. He has so to lean against something. That, yeah. He's always got to be touching something. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Okay. Jen Johnson. 
<laughs> oh. <laughs> Can oh. you explain why an elk barks? Sure. Because you just, wind, a, they winded you. It's a snort. Mm -hmm. It's, a it's snort. like a white tail snort. Everyone yep. else, it's, oh! You, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just it'll like that. It'll scare the hell out oh, of you. It'll if, scare you the if you're not ready for it. Yeah, I think oh. I scared Aubrey on that one. <laughs> <laughs> it was the face that he made. We've or. actually, I've used that even when they've barked and caught us. I've barked back at them. Oh. And you watch them. <laughs> they're like, they're like, really? like what the heck? And they w they hesitate. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah. it you, you know it is an alarm. Definitely alarm. It's we actually just heard that a couple Remember weeks that? ago on the deck. Was uh, there they were barking down. Cat down below. There had to be something go down below because down they were barking the down below. You heard them down below. Yes. Oh, they were. They were crazy. barking, barking like crazy, and then they barked again about two hours later. Like, Jen and I happened huh? to be sitting outside on the deck and heard the noise. They must not like something down there. Then. Yeah. No, yeah. there was something that she was. You know, they were. They had to be something she, down there. They and they went saying, down and looked to see if maybe there was a kill or something down there. They couldn't find anything, mm. but. But and remember, it, we had them on the spy point because we had it on video. That's and right. And you're watching all the elk are going. Yeah. yeah. So you knew what was going on. And you, something and, went yeah. on down there. We never found anything, but they no, were I definitely not purpose. happy with something. Weird. Yeah. It was so it might have been a cat just moving through. You, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. A bear. Yep. Didn't they just like didn't it. like it, or it was actually staying there for a while. Mm -hmm. um, I got a whiff of something Jen. they just didn't yeah, like. Yeah, because there's still water in the creek down there, too. Still? could have been Look as dry as it is. Yeah, there's still water. Wow. Well, going along with that. Why don't we just talk about all different calls that we just know of, at least? Oh. Like your bugling, your cow calling, barks, chirping. everything, chirping, whistling. I just learned about whistling earlier, mm. I think, today. Yeah. I didn't realize that there was kind of different, would you say, the styles of bugles? Well. Or how, how would you? You know, years ago when I had the camp, there were, there were hunters that came out that actually sounded bigger and badder than any bull I've ever heard in the wild, ever. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? It's not a calling contest. You know, it's, it's like, again, I hate making this comparison because it's not the same, but for many, they turkey hunting. You, you <laughs> know what I mean? Sa same thing with any type of calling. Yeah. Um, you, you know, you can come in. Here, here's, a good, I guess, a good example. You got your, your biggest bull on the mountains, a, a five by six. He's got eight or ten cows, right? right. Mm -hmm. You come in sounding like this giant, massive, you know, seven by seven, and he, you just sound tough. And, and you're gurgling at yeah, him, yeah. and it's yeah. all throaty. you got the growl going yeah. on. What's he going to do? He's going to hook those girls and leave. Take them. Mm -hmm. yep. When if you would have went in and just went, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And don't go into a whole big, you know, growling and all this stuff. And you raise the curiosity, and the girls lift their heads, and they're looking, you know what I mean? Then all of a sudden, you do a couple cow calls, some calves, mm. you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And the next thing you know, you start having them start to filter. They want to come see. He, in the, you know, in the turn, he's like, well, he don't sound big. He don't sound tough. I'm going to go kick his butt and steal his girls. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. A lot of times what I like to do, and, and, and even mom, you, you know, you turn around and you listen to what, let them talk. And repeat it. Mm -hmm. Just give it back to them. Just like a big old, just a boss hen. You know what I mean? Yeah. You've seen it, remember? Oh, yeah. You've, we, and I even showed you years ago, you know, she just starts going, you give it right back yes. to her. Mm -hmm. Sound like her, but give yeah. it back. And yep. the next thing you know, you almost don't repeat. move. There she is. You, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And, uh -huh. oh, look. He's the curiosity back killed the cat. Uh -huh. yep. yep. So the same thing is, is try not to, you know, it's not a calling contest. You know, li listen to the, the best teachers out there are the animals themselves. Mm -hmm. Take the time to learn that. Just like Leo, we can yep. Leo, we could, we could, we could. You probably can't even hear on these mics, his, but he's, he's, he's snoring. snoring. That's why I'm trying to move He's him. gurgling like a big old bull. stop snoring right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I think There's each no call had just like a duck hunter, waterfowl hunter or whatever. Uh -oh. yeah. You know what uh -oh. you know, I mean? You have all your different cadences. Uh -oh. Oh. Captain. Yeah, <laughs> I figured that one was going to happen. But you, you, you know what I mean? I, yeah. I think I'm just a big fan of not being super aggressive. Mm -hmm. trying to raise their curiosity and we've done it multiple times like i'd rather sneak into an area into their bedroom yeah and then and rip then, it oh and then you and make then him even mad. if he's in his bed he's like oh no not here big boy <laughs> this you know is my mean? spot and he comes in and yep <laughs> <laughs> if you're if you're watching right now yeah if you're watching right captain's now captain's all curled up if now you're not if dogs are yeah doing what dogs do oh yeah absolutely mm -hmm. being in the way as always <laughs> how was that one Good. That was a good answer. I'd say good so. Answer. Yeah. Good um, although gurgling, right? Not gurgling. Glunker. Glunking. 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 That's something that I experienced for the first time last year. Yep. You like did. My New Mexico oh, bull, where you're going. Walking. Yeah. That's really cool. And he goes, As he's walking. Rrr, rrr, rrr. Sounds like like we talked about last time, like yep. dad going to the bathroom. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, 
is that just something that they do when they're excited and they come running in? Yeah, what? he's he's, he's excited. Up. He's worked up. He yeah, wants he's to know who's screaming yeah. at him. Yep. He's all and you could, as you saw, ready. you can grab your call and just hit it hot your tube. Yeah, go and on. hit that, and it it gives it really replicates the same you know type <laughs> of sound. Um, and yeah, that's just that's like that's like that white tail. You know, he hears the rattling. And it hits, and it's then on. maybe a snort wheeze, and he's like, "Whoa, yeah, I'm coming in." <laughs> and, and, and obviously, I mean, just like in a white tail, like you said, you could rattle, and they'll come in. You're not going to carry around two elk sheds or mm -hmm. try to rattle, no. but you can go ahead and <laughs> you can make a whole bunch of messy noise on brush yep. and make yeah. it like they're raking the trees and they're doing stuff like that. That will get them excited, also, besides your calling. So that's mm -hmm. kind of cool. Sometimes just raking is better yep. than calling. Yeah, because they don't that's... know what it is. They want to come and find out what's <clears throat> yep. doing it. I know, like at RNK, usually when I'm hunting with Blake, yep. as we're as he's calling or going through, we'll actually step on some branches, make some noise, yes. right? So it, it replicates that sound of an elk you, walking through the walking? timber. Do you know what I learned years ago from Fern? From up at Fern. Um, Cashaboni out Cashaboni outposts was when we were moose hanging up and up there. Remember that? And he's like, be breaking branches, but he said, you know, when you're gonna break a branch, you step on it. If it doesn't snap. Then you got to pick it up and break it, but you always want to break it down, not up, because it sounds makes a diff it sounds different. Yeah. And elk aren't <laughs> going to break branches up. That's you very true. You step on them and then you break down, and that's what. Yeah. Remember that? Yep. Oh, I do. <laughs> Thank you, Fern. You learn from everybody. Yep. Mm -hmm. Everybody has their own <laughs> tips and tricks. Just got to be willing yep. to learn. Yes. Absolutely. That's right. yep. Take it away, Aubrey. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Which one are we on? I don't know. We went over Jen, and we kind of changed things. <clears throat> okay. So Richard asks: So how hard is it to bugle a bull in? Depends on the season. Dep yeah, depends right. on when. Depends on when. Depends on the temperature outside. It depends on a lot of different <laughs> things. If they're ready to go and they're going, depending on he's the dominant bull. I mean, there's so many. That's kind of a hard question to answer. There, there's so mm -hmm. many variables to that answer. If it was prime rut, much easier than if yes. you're <laughs> way early or way late. Yeah. Right. And the thing is, is a lot of times the herd bulls will have you got to sound just perfect for him to leave his cows. Mm -hmm. First off, I think there's a few things. Number one, you're going to, just like a whitetail rut, you're going to hear people saying, oh, man, that you know, we didn't have a rut this year. Mm -hmm. And then you see fawns, and then you see calves. Then You know what I mean? In the spring, <laughs> there's a rut everywhere. It, it just happens. Sometimes yeah. you're not in the area where it was really active, but it was still going on. Mm -hmm. Calling, again, like we said, just said earlier, you know, listen to what's going on. You know, if you're walking and hiking and, and just trying to locate a bull, you, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Once you get a response, that's when the woodsmanship comes in. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? And we don't, nobody talks about that anymore. You, you know what I mean? It's what call you're using. It's, it's you mm -hmm. know, what scent elimination you're using. Right. The reality of it is, is being a good woodsman. You know, trying to, 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 to pinpoint where that sound's coming from. Look at the terrain, understand it, and then make your move. A lot of times you're going to have to cover some ground fast, mm -hmm. depending on how he's bugling. If he's, bug you know, if he's bugling a lot, it tells you he's hot. You, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. So now you've got to move in a little bit quicker, and I like to move in quieter, even though you make a little bit of noise, but you never bugle until you're getting closer, you know, unless, unless he's, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just let the animal dictate what you're doing you know what I mean and respond accordingly if he's bugling like we've how many times we've had bulls bugle in their bed oh yeah and you bugle back and that you could still two hours later he's still bugling in his bed that that was actually mine in um Colorado here a bunch of years ago yeah. he was bugling in his bed huh. he had a bunch of cows you could hear and them mewing around do? we sat and we waited and, and we just let him know every once in a while that we were hanging out Yep. You know, just a little call here, and a little call there. The and we got closer just to let him know. And we would hear him bugle again, and then it just happened. Yep. He got up, come out, look and see what the heck we were. Yeah. I mean, we waited a bit for it. I mean, yeah. we, we, we did a we lot of the climb, distance, close got distance in closer, in there. let him bugle, sort of let him know we were on our way, got in closer, didn't call him. You know what I mean? And he was actually the herd bull. And he's mm. still the biggest bull in the house. He is the biggest bull in the house. I do have the biggest elk in the house. I do. By about 11 inches, but who's counting? Dang. But who's counting, yeah. But who's counting? I wouldn't big count. Bowl. Yeah, it is a big bowl. Dang. Yep. He's beautiful. Yeah, he's he up is. over the windows there he's, in the house. He's absolutely yeah, he is he very burr, beautiful. I shot. Oh, whatever. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, whatever. Yeah, right. Yes. <laughs> right. All righty. Patrick asks, would you ever consider hunting a high fence? Um, That's a good question. It's a very good question. Here, very, very controversial topic. Um, right. 
and I'm not afraid of controversy at all. <laughs> Every day in life, there's controversy. <laughs> Literally, Every just day, watch the seriously. news. Seriously, yeah. You, you, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, no doubt. You know, we've hunted Texas. We've hunted South Africa. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you know what I mean? Where they were, you know, big ranches. Yep. I'll be honest. If it's a big, you know, a, a big area, right? We, we don't have a an issue with it. Um, you know, do do we do it? Again, like I said, we've done it overseas. And, uh, and, yeah. You know, we've done exotics down in Texas. Yes. Right. You know, and yep. things like that. I I personally would rather hunt elk in, in the, the wild. wild. Yes. But it's a personal choice. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it is what it is. And like you said, we just went to South Africa. And most of South Africa are huge Are ranches. estates. Yeah. They're estates. Yeah. Crazy so, big yeah. New Zealand. Absolutely. New Zealand I mean, are estates you know, all usually. Of them. Yeah. But Texas. they're big estates. We're right. not, we're not, it's not it's, a small enclosure. Right. So it's here's the bottom a, line. Let's not pick each other apart. Right. You know, right. I, I think there's opportunities for every person out there that wants to enjoy getting out in the woods. <laughs> Some maybe don't have the time. Yep. Yep. You, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or physically maybe not capable um, or you, you know what I mean? So, so we're not against anything. If it's legal in your state, province or country, Shut up. Let's all let's mm-hmm. all go yep. have fun. Let's all hunt. Yeah, yes. let's all hunt. Perfect. Agreed. I like that answer. That was good. Go. Okay, you can do the next one. I just did oh, two in a row. putting me on the next <laughs> one. She's counting. She's like, mm, I did two. It's well, your Well, this turn. one. All right, this one's from Harry. Yes. What's Hi, a, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> what's a decent OTC over-the-counter unit for archery elk in Colorado? Oh, boy. <laughs> all right, Harry. Oh, We're still well, learning. We've only been yeah. here for three years. So. Here's what I would tell you. Two years. Look Contact WTA Tags. And we're not going to, twi- again, you guys know us. We're not claiming to be experts in anything. And we're definitely not experts, even though we moved to Colorado. We are learning it. And before we give you some misinformation, I'd rather you go to someone that deals with it every single day. That's their business. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And contact them, you know, and see what they say. I, I will tell you this. We were really surprised to find out how many units have over, you know, over the counter tags yeah. for archery mm-hmm. which season, which is and, crazy. And you can go and check game and fish. Yep, I, I, I check mean, check out numbers, figure it out that way. Well, the other thing too is also check out the terrain. Some yeah. terrain, you know, is is you know, some areas are based on your physical abilities. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I mean? If if mm-hmm. you're older, if you're younger, if you really want to do it on your own, you know, hike mount, you know, get yeah. way off the beaten path, or if you can't. So, I I think each area has its own different attributes. Right. Um, and again, uh, I would tell you. Here's what else screws my head up. Really? No, <laughs> is this the only thing that screws no. your head up? Hell oh, okay. Because <laughs> no. I was going to say no, but no, that, that, but since you you're... did, okay, okay, okay. But Good seriously, day. a lot of these states and people don't even know this. <clears throat> they have even in draw areas they have leftover tags. Yes. I mean, so <clears throat> yeah. So you draw, you you get declined, yeah, but you can still get a tag. You could still get a tag because you, you call and you find out the date when the tag, and they're, they're like, you, you oh You know no. why, don't you? Why there's leftover tags? Why? Because some people that actually drew for whatever reason yes. can't afford to do it, or something else comes up something. and they can't go. So then there's a tag. No, I know, but, but they have a certain amount of time after they're told that they got the tag to go ahead and return the tag. Mm-hmm. So that's why there's always like a leftover tag. I don't think that's the only reason. That's not. No, I don't. You think, think so. they just hold them? You think, think there's think like a conspiracy theory head. behind this that just they're just with you. they just to mess with you? Yeah. Well, well everybody. Okay. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, we got 254 tags left. Well, no. You de- you declined 500 people. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you just give those to those other half half of that 500? Because they gave them all out originally, <laughs> no, no, like and the then those other people turned them back in. <laughs> no, I'm going to change it's, it. Uh, I'm going to run for president and change all this. I am. No, but he was just talking. Kidding. He was talking about over the counter tags. No, I know. No, I was oh, just okay. said that was one of my pet. I know it, it blows his mind. It does, as you can tell. <laughs> so, so there are. We're finding out there's a there's so many more, you know, units that you can, especially archery, which is awesome. Yes. You know, and like Vicky said, second and third seasons. You know. Yep. With rifle. And a lot of places is over the counter. So. <laughs> but go to someone that that I, I consider experts. Again, WTA tags, right. talk to them and say, listen, here's my physical capability. Here's what, you know, maybe if you have preference points, even though you're, you're not looking for, for you know, a, a closed zone, you know, that you have to right. apply for. But they might tell you, listen, you've got these, t- you got some preference points. 
why don't we get you in this one? And then you get into a, a better area. You, you, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Maybe less pressure. And I, I just think that's surprisingly how many areas there are. Mm-hmm. So just check with someone that knows way more than we do. <laughs> yeah, we're still learning a lot about and, and actually, the other thing, too, is there's a lot. You got in Colorado here, you have A, B, and C yes. tags, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is another thing that blows my mind as well as his mind. Because if it blows my mind, it really blows his yeah, mind. Gone. And our minds. But ours, yeah. one of the things you have to realize, too, is why he's telling you to double check and just reach out maybe to game and fish and check things out or whatever is because there's a lot of C elk tags, which means you can get more than one mm-hmm. east of I-25. The only thing is it's prairie. Yeah. Right. And there's not a whole bunch of public places over there. So it might look like a great deal and you could do it and it's flat and you're not going to kill yourself. But again, just double check. Yep. What's next, up next? Robert asks, how bad was the 2022 Colorado winter relating to a winter kill of elk and deer? So I guess right. it depends on where in the state yep. you're at. Yeah, Utah so up in that northwest, northwest corner, corner was bad. Yeah, they got it bad. Real bad. Up there by yes. Utah and everything. Utah, Wyoming, all that whole corner up there, mm-hmm. they got hit hard. I mean, even Wyoming has changed a whole bunch of their deer and antelope tags oh, this yeah. season mm-hmm. because of the amount of kill they had, mm-hmm. because they had so much snow. We drove through. We Remember, we, Salt Lake we went to Salt Lake and, and, and to Easton, mm-hmm. and as we were driving up, and that was like late March, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. and how many and how many deer we saw, yeah, snow. feet and feet the and feet. They were snow. right against yeah. the highway, by interstate. It was there crazy. Were just yeah. right hundreds of deer just right along the highway. It was nuts. Dead it was. ones. It, it, it was never seen wildlife so, like that. No. Now, we've talked to um, Rob Mace up at R&K, Queen yep. Mountain in Wyoming, where we're going to be hunting elk, and he said... Their elk herd is doing okay. Good. They're they're pretty far up there. Yeah. They're yeah. close to where all that snow was at, but they also have a lot of prairie out there. They have a That's little great. more open area, yeah. too, where once we where were going through to. the mountains there. Do you remember the photo he sent us? Yeah. Going all to the lodge? Elk. The snow looked like it was six foot where the where the yeah. dozer came and cleared it mm. to get to the lodge. Jeez. But... Like he said, and again, that's all. What you want to do is just, you know, reach out to locals, reach out to your outfitter. Mm-hmm. You, you, you know what I mean? Here's the, a good outfitter doesn't want you cut to come and have a miserable experience Absolutely. because he knows that you tell, you know, a hundred people yep. Yep. that it was horrible. You, you yeah. know what I mean? A good outfitter. So, so, so just do your do your homework. You know, yes, it was there were some bad, very bad winter kills, but also the states were pro, pro- aggressive. And they actually, you know, regulated the tags, changed right. things they around. Right, they changed things up for, which, the, for those know, areas. Yep. And yeah. some yeah. of us may get mad. You know, some may get mad like, well, you know, they can't do that. They took our tags away. They're managing. They're managing yeah. the herd. That's you, the they're point They're doing what this. they can for that exactly. herd, especially in a situation yeah, right. that they just went through. And that's actually when all that was going on and we were seeing Wyoming had changed all their antelope quotas and their mule deer quotas. Mm-hmm. We reached out to Scott and Angie yeah. up at Table Mountain. Yeah. I'm like, are we? How was your guys' winter up there? Do we need? She's like, no, we're good, but that other corner really got hit hard. Mm -hmm. And then I mean, like here we are, we're in southern Colorado, pretty central southern Colorado, and we had a couple good storms come through, but but it melts so fast that it it our our herds are doing awesome down here. So, yep. Mm -hmm. Aubrey, was that number two or was that number one? I'll just keep going. Okay, Okay, I was (laughs) just checking. (laughs) Dwayne asks, "What state is best for elk hunting?" Well, I think Colorado has more elk than the other states, highest, don't they? The highest, highest, pop- concentration, highest concentration population. population. So, gosh, that's a good question. Hmm. I have no idea. <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there. I have like, no I mean, idea. I mean, there, there's Real, so many. I, I'm going to tell you something. Um, we've hunted the majority of the states, and each state has, you know, good hunting. Yes. Good, good you know great hunting uh it, it all it's it's preference you know yeah and and i mean it's i mean look at pa look at pennsylvania you know they they yeah. it mm-hmm. reintroduced the herd and yep. now they're in hunting kentucky it. huh look michigan michigan I, I mean, you got all yeah. of these states that you never would have thought now there were out there before sometime yeah. you know what i mean but not then they so, so each state has its own you know great mm-hmm. great things some states are easier to draw to hunt or mm-hmm. to draw mm-hmm. because of their licensing yeah you, you, you know what i mean mm-hmm. so it's just a matter of what you're looking to do and so, i mean when you look at like back a few years ago they were talking like arizona you're going to shoot a monster every time you go but it's impossible to draw an arizona tag yeah. you know or nevada's oh, no. really hard to draw an elk yeah. tag yeah you know well, you certain units in colorado certain, absolutely you know what, yeah. so you know what it, i mean in, in montana Mexico, yeah and, it, and it's also, if you look at it also, you got to look at it at whitetail hunting again. We keep throwing it back to whitetail because everyone knows what a whitetail and how yes. to hunt whitetails yeah. is. 
you can go hunt the entire state of Illinois. Some areas are going to be better than other areas. It's the same state, mm-hmm. but it just depends on where it's at and the population of it and the genetics in the area. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. So how about that? Oh, there she goes, <laughs> passing the question. Bottom line, off. just get out and elk hunt. Yep. Just go hunt. Yeah. Just go. Wherever you have just the opportunity, seize it. All right. Tim. I gave you the hard one, hey, by the way. You gave me the hard one? Yeah. Uh-oh. Purposely. There's From two. Mr. Tim. Okay. <laughs> what are costs and how to be able to afford a trip of this magnitude? Great so, question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, first and foremost, you've got to, you know, check the states. You can see what licenses cost in mm-hmm. each state. Yeah. You know, if you're trying to set a budget, um, you know, you know, again, right now, and I'm going to bitch, is, I, you know, oh, look at, well, look at gas prices. Yeah. No, this you're right. Ridiculous. Right now it's $4 right now. Yeah. And it's going insane. up. It's, it's ridiculous. Yep. You know, and they're saying, oh, how our economy's doing so great. It ain't. No. It ain't for all of us. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. Wow. Right? Cool. He's, he's, he's no, going all kinds of holes today. I agree. Well, no, I it was but, but, but the yeah, truth it's is, true is because he's it's, asking a legitimate question. Yeah. And we're saying, you know, back, you know, just a few years ago, man, it was affordable to yeah. do all this. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Now you got to sell your, your, you know, your grown up kid. To just have the gas to, to, to Sorry, go RJ, west. we're selling You're you so, so we can go. Good thing we moved to Colorado. I'm out of here. <laughs> no, but right? Don't you agree? I, I mean, you know, tag. Well, no, but you know what? Because people plan things out two or three years in advance yeah. for a big hunt. If you've never done this before, and you, I mean, there's a lot of people that plan it way ahead yeah. of time. Yep. Mm-hmm. And maybe you budget, a, you know, a certain amount of money for gas. Well, now it's two dollars more a gallon than it was oh. when you started your planning. And mm-hmm. that can really put a crump on you. I mean, it could just crunch you right down. Yeah. The reality of it is. And we're not picking on anybody, but if you have had a little bit of success hunting at home, okay, white tailed, white tailed, okay. you, you know, you know, yep. nor, just making sure I understood, but, but you're not really, you, you know, having that much success, you, you know, just maybe it's your area, what, whatever. I don't want to see you put together a budget, come out west, never done it before, try to do it yourself, try to do it yourself. And have a nice camping trip, but it just costs you money, and you, mm-hmm. you, know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Hold off a year. Build that budget up. Reach out and talk to some outfitters. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And for your first time coming out here, I know it's more money. I admit I know it. But there's all different price range outfitters, yep. too. Yes. Yep. Some and where they have the, the, the genetics... You know, you may have a harder hunt to go ahead and shoot, you know, a, a ginormous bull if you can draw the tag. But there's other outfitters out there where there's over-the-counter tags where you may not get the opportunity at a huge bowl, but you're going to have your first opportunity an, as yeah. an elk, and you will yeah. learn so much from that trip that maybe, you know, you save up a couple more years, maybe you get a buddy, and then you guys try doing mm-hmm. it on your own. Yeah. Well, you know. Look at KRO. They got right. a cow. And, and I think everybody, uh, yep. most of your In outfitters, Utah. have cow elk hunts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, Go on a cow elk hunt. Now, yeah, yeah I know you're saying, well, I want to put the head. Well, you can yeah, put no, a cow but the elk. meat's really good. No, but you could do this for such a reasonable budget. Oh, yeah. yeah absolutely. Such a reasonable. And learn what you're doing. Yes, yeah. yes you experience it's, it. Because even though you're on a cow hunt, you'll there's still going to be bulls. bulls. I mean, it's not. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. And you, you get to see them firsthand exactly. what the animals are it. doing. You can learn from the animals. And if you're on the guided hunt for a cow elk, you can understand why they go and what they're doing and ask questions on that trip. You know, we, we get that and people go, man, you know, wow, sheep hunt. Yeah, I'd love to go on. You can get a U tag, mm-hmm. you, you know what I mean, for well, sheep. You can try. Well, you yeah. can try. No, but, but it's We're way trying. Easier. It's yes. way easier. to, And you're going to experience your sheep hunt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everything you ever read, saw, or whatever. Right. You know what I mean? And you're getting sheep meat. Yeah. But you're doing it at a budget like this yeah. compared to a budget like that yeah you, you, you know what i mean so so do not shy away from look at some of these hunts that you know cow cow elk hunt mm-hmm. and i think you'd be surprised coming out for the first time you learn the ins and the outs yep you learn what it what it physically and mentally takes mm-hmm. and i'm not i mean it could be a tree stand hunt or a ground blind. Right. so but but the big thing is is you could do it at such a small cost and enjoy, fill the freezer and everything. And, you know, you're elk hunting. That's a good answer. Was that, that was, a good that answer? That's a really good answer. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. All the well, answers are great. Yeah, they're I mean, all, I mean all, if, if, all. if you want just a very generic answer, we could tell you you're going to need travel costs, which would be food and probably hotel on the way out, depending on where you're going. Mm-hmm. Yep. You're probably going to, if you're going to, if a tag, if you got to draw if it's mm-hmm. over the counter, Colorado is almost $800 or more for a non-resident elk tag. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
then you also have to worry about if where you're going to where you're going to be hunting some state national parks you're going to have to pay a fee to get in yep. you're going to pay a camping fee while you're there i mean there's all kinds of other just generic answer that's your generic mm-hmm. answer and with an outfitter tips too and with an outfitter if you go with an outfitter tips. yeah yep, tips mm-hmm. oh wait here i'm going to since today is my day to pet pee right? i guess oh, no. so no here's oh, another one oh, here we go. pay attention to this one don't know what he's doing today <laughs> a while back we went up north in in montana I shot a deer, and the guide said, oh, you, you know, oh, no, we'll take it in, remember, to the processing. And yep. I said, oh, okay, you, you, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. 18 bags of ground meat, nothing added. Right. Nothing Just added. 18, 18 bags, two-pound bags, almost $400 yeah. for the Yeah, take processing. the meat home with you and process it yourself. Just Dang. saying. Yeah, sometimes you've got to be real careful. Check out if, if someone says, hey, you know, we'll drop that off or just take it here call and ask them because that was a ridiculous <laughs> amount of oh, money yeah. for yes. 18 yeah. bags of just ground yeah. right you, you, i almost was like well you could keep it you, you know what i mean but we you wouldn't do that you know it's really cool too is we've seen it before and we even know people have done it that they'll have a pickup truck and sometimes if they're going to come out and they're going to do it themselves bring they'll a pull a trailer they bring a freezer oh, yeah. and a generator yep. and uh-huh. then you can take all that meat to bone it put in that freezer take it home and do it yourself at home it's going to mm-hmm. save you a ton of money and i'm going to tell you when we all like just every year we yeah. all process mo- the majority of our stuff yeah. that we hunt. Yep. You, you know, we process it here and, at home, and it just—it's a family thing, and it's it, fun. It, you, you know what you're getting, and it's yeah. your meat, yeah. and yes. you know you can cut yeah. out exactly. the nastiness stuff if you yes. want. Exactly. It's not going to get mixed in with someone else's stuff that maybe didn't take care of it the way we do. Yeah. So, yep. Now you, you go like to your... Brian's, huh? Oh, Brian Newell's, oh, and them. they've got the oh, yeah, processing okay. right there, right? Yeah, at the and the chorizo, so elk chorizo, so they make. Oh. I'm yeah, hoping that, that to bring some of that home with me this fall. Yeah. I'm just saying. If you go hunt with Knock Brian, I am telling you it is Top worth notch the outfitters. investment. Get it worth done the there. Investment yeah, they, get it done. To get it processed there because. What is it called? Hook them. Hook them. Hook them. Hook them. Oh, Hook processing. My yeah. Mm. Gosh. Huh? Down near El Capitan, New Mexico. Oh. That's and RNK. Yes. RNK has the same processing. Mm-hmm. You, yeah. you know what I mean? But not uh, as good as that. Sorry. Oh, your seasoning. Yeah. Not as good as Hook them. What sausage are that made? Yeah, because you complain it's too expensive. Well, I know, but it was it's worth it. <laughs> it was worth it. Okay. We might have to do that. God willing, if we do something, you know, get get some elk this year at R&K, mm-hmm. we might have to. Because that. I think you can order their, their powder and stuff. Oh, can you? Yeah. Or their okay. mixes, I mean. Yeah. yeah. Oh, like, because we did that. Nice. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Cool. All right. All right. Yeah. Good. So we have another question. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. this last Squirrel. last question that I have written down. Okay. Written, that she has written down. That she has written down. Okay. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> okay, Brian asks, the best strategy for hunting northern Idaho bulls in the thick forest Who? up here. <laughs> Dang. Yes. Northern Idaho has some mean country. Oh, oh so wow. there's Deep some incline. mean canyons yeah, I went up, up there. I for there. bears a couple of years ago. And oh, yeah. I didn't expect that in Idaho. I mean, I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. I was searching up. I've seen it, but whew, yeah. it's beautiful, yeah. though. Holy cow. You said you were like gorgeous. elk hunting for bears, it's though. Gorgeous yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. it's insane. It truly was. You know, beautiful. and there were, wow. you know. They had issues years ago, you know, with the wolf situation. They were mm-hmm. one of the first ones to experience it, yeah. and the wolves came in and devastated oh. things. And now they're back Frickin strong wolves. as ever, huh? Freaking yeah. wolves. Yeah. But but they're back as ever. Um, you know, <laughs> bro, I got to be honest with you. We haven't really done a lot of hunting there, so we're not going to tell you. You know, try to mislead you. But I will tell you this: we've hunted elk in very thick cover, you know, with some some miserable terrain, uh, and a lot of times. Even though they're close, you you'll have them come in and you can't even get a shot. I, I'm, yep. you, you know what I mean? They so, could be ten yards from you and you can't mm. get a shot at them. And he screams. Your locations. Mm. You, you know what yep. I mean? Like if you got that bull working, if you're working that bull, and you all of a sudden got to a spot and it's a little more open, you might want to just hunker down there, grab you know our Montana decoys. You hurry up and pop them up. Yep. You, you, you know what I mean? But you you come past it. Let the decoy be in back of you. So when he comes in. He's not paying attention to what's that, you know, that image is. is, He sees that cow decoy, you you know what I mean? And he's like, oh, and he comes by you and he presents that shot. And the other thing too, and I know that we've dealt with this a bunch, especially when when we're hunting on ridges and stuff. Oh, sorry, Captain has to scratch. My apologies. (laughs) He's like, Um, hold on. Thermals. Yep. You need to get up above them before they get there. Yep. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that could be tough to do. Yes. You, you, you know what I mean? But but again, you, you know, uh, you know, with us not being there, we don't want to mislead anybody. Um, you know, there are way, you know, better hunters that have they've covered that terrain and that, that type of country. But again, elk are elk. 
You, yes. You, you know what I mean? They'll If you listen to them and, and they'll tell you what they're doing, you know, and you make your approach and you do it as, as best again as you can, always checking the wind, um, you, know, you know, and sometimes you might have to be a little more aggressive in that thick stuff. You, yeah. you, you know what I mean? To get him to come out, to, to, to present himself. But again, you know, I really like hunting always with somebody. Mm-hmm. Not only for the safety feature, but that person can sit back, hold the decoy up, can turn around, Do some cow, cow call, and... mew, or even bugle while you make your approach. And he really and likes he... having me there as a pack mule. I yes. was going <laughs> to say, that's exactly what I was going to say. And we really like to have RJ around because he can help us pack it out. Yep. yep. Yes. I've accepted that one. Good, yeah. good, good, good. We're glad you know well, that. Well, you're built yeah. for it, so. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. But, the, I mean, so, so, so you know, again, uh, the animals are the best teachers. They yes. truly are. Learn from them. Don't th- don't go in there thinking that you know it all. They they live there every single day of their lives. Mm-hmm. You're in their backyard, you know, and, and you've got to understand they know what's going on. They know what was there and what isn't there. And and you know, there's so many other variables. Mm-hmm. Just uh, again, be a better woodsman. Mm-hmm. I don't care where you are, whether it's northern Idaho or you know you know right on the border of Canada. You, yeah. you, you know what I mean, or even hunting. Canada. Isn't northern Idaho yeah. right on the border of Canada? It is. Okay, I, check <laughs> I don't know. I was just making sure. I mean, I just you know. But that's what I would say. All right. All right. You have questions too. I have a too? few questions. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Did you come up with these on your own, or is this from online? A little, also? Bit, a little bit of mix. Mix. Okay. Yes. And the first one is, how do people find a quality outfitter or guide? Going into it and not knowing. How do you make sure this person isn't going to screw you? So I think one of the first things you need to do is just look up the game, up at Game and Fish, and they're gonna, most of the states now have it where they're going to, they're verified or right through mm-hmm. the Game and Fish departments of the states. But when you do finally decide on an area in the outfitter you want to do more research on, when you check his references or her references, mm-hmm. check both positive and negative. Yeah. Tell them you mm-hmm. don't want just successful references because you're going to get a good result <laughs> you know um you want to hear the negative ones and you want to know why it was negative some people may have a negative reference only because it rained the entire time yeah, well that's not the outfitter's fault, fault you right. know so can't control the weather can't control the weather <laughs> you know and the other thing too is mom's spot on I, I mean you know a lot of the states and provinces have outfitter associations organizations <laughs> reach out to them Yep. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Reach out to the state or the province mm-hmm. and say, hey, guys, you, you know, I mean, we're looking to go up there. You know, where can you know, where do you suggest or talk to tourism departments? Yep. You, you, oh, you know yeah. what I mean? They might have an in. There's two sides to every story. Yes. Absolutely. And then there's the <laughs> truth. Yes. You, you, you know what I mean? Absolutely. You know, someone that had a miserable hunt because maybe they weren't physically ready or mentally ready mm-hmm. they go hurry up and they get home and they go on social media keyboard because warrior. a keyboard yeah. gives them gonads oh, yeah. they never had you, yep. you know what i mean and they slam that outfitter who really did nothing wrong mm-hmm. you know again two sides of every story and then yep. there's the truth and and, and we we've seen and heard oh. a bunch of different things you know what <laughs> Everything. i mean i mean we've we've been to good out we've been to great outfitters <clears throat> which is usually when we return back to them because yes. we yes. love times. them like yep. family but then we've been to a couple that we would never return to, you know, and mm-hmm. if anyone were to call us and ask us why, we would come straight out and tell them, mm-hmm. you know, and it's it's not because of the weather. <laughs> there was other things. You, long, let's long not go. even okay, go let's there. Let's not even no, go there. Okay, no. never mind. Squirrel. Okay, uh, go Again, ahead. <laughs> you know, there, there's really good booking agents. Yep. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And we talked about, you know, WTA tags and all mm-hmm. them. And there's others, you know, out there that, that really do their due diligence. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And and they either know somebody that's hunted with them or they themselves go there and they give them a rating. Yeah. You, you, you know what I mean? Yep. Today with social media, you have so much to your, so much accessible. Mm-hmm. Yes. But read between the lines. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like get the references, like mom was saying, you know, that positive and negative. And call them up. Just call them up. Yeah. You got and, nothing to lose. And honestly, it sounds crazy, but outfitters are businesses. You can actually check the Better Business Bureau. Yeah. For the yeah. rating on it to see what's going on with it. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's fair. I didn't even yeah. think about that one. Yeah. yeah. That's a good one. They're a business. <laughs> Do your research. Absolutely. Do your research. All okay. right. The last few questions, we're going to kind of go around in a circle and give all of our answers. Oh, boy. And this starting, is new. Yeah. This Why is not, new. Right? We're going to try something oh, new. Yeah. Oh, boy. We're going to make we sure go. everybody okay. has an answer. Let's go. Including the dogs. No. Oh. Yeah, including the dogs. Yeah. So, for, first of all, the question is, what's your favorite cartridge for elk? And I'm going to add on to this. What style of export 
do you like to run for elk? What's and I'm going to start with you because I think because everybody. I'm six point eight Western oh, Mountain Pro. Not to you yet. Browning. Oh, period. Done. My gosh. <laughs> so yeah, I did concur. I answer? I and I and I could tell you why. The six point eight is just a. <laughs> a well, no, I was going to say that that's my the gun. Six point eight. You know, you've got a great heavier grain weight. Mm-hmm. You're still shooting flatter trajectory. Yep. You know what I mean? We got our Griffin suppressors on there. To, mm-hmm. It's like a dream to shoot. <laughs> you, no, you, you, you no, know it is, and and it shoots well. Oh, I mean, yeah. I've I've I love oh. that gun. That yeah. that rifle, that Browning rifle, the Mountain Pro because it's lighter. It's lighter. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not hard to take anywhere. And I know Aubrey has not shot an elk yet. But she shot her muley with my Mountain Pro, my Browning 6.8 oh, Westing. Oh, I know she's hooked. And she oh, yeah. hooked. And so, Even like, shooting it on the range. Like, we have to, like, fight over it. that gun. So oh, yeah. that would be mine. Well, we have another one now, so. Okay. Mine too, so. Oh. Yeah. Well, well what's yours? <laughs> It, I, it'd be, I'm going to say 300. It'd be I was going to say, was gonna say was that was say, the other yeah. one would That's be a 300 win say, because. Just because I love the 300 win. And yeah. before the 6.8 out came ever came out, before Browning came out with the 6.8 Western, mm-hmm. I would have told you 300 yeah. win <laughs> because that was my gun. Like, seriously, I think out of everything that we've, From we've gun hunted. From Alaska to Florida. Oh, you every, could do yeah, every, between everything. The 300's going to do everything you oh, need. Yeah. And everything. so will the 6.8. So now, so will the 6.8. Yes. We don't have one, but I do love the Mountain Pro of the X-Bolt. Yeah. Yeah. But I really like their suppressor ready versions now, which are shorter. Yes. Shorter, yeah. Yeah, I haven't messed with them yet, but I have a feeling that that would be you're my gonna go-to. Be getting one? Oh yeah, yeah. I have oh. a feeling I might be buying one of those here soon. There you okay. Go. Oh yeah, awesome. that that would might be my all right. So you should say, soon for most hey guys, <laughs> you heard him. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to call out names so they don't yell us later. Same exact thing. Okay, I figured. Yeah. I was making sure. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Really and this is not a, a paid, at, you know, endorsement. No, we, no, we no. We've shot this a bunch truthful. of them, and that is our yep. preference. Yes. Even going really... to outfitters, everybody that oh, sees them, once tries they them. shot them. Yeah. Remember Rob yes. and everybody? They're like, oh, my gosh. Yep. Yeah, everybody. And now this fall we'll have our suppressors, and they're going to love me oh. more. Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah. It'll be, nice. be awesome. It'll be nice. It will okay. be nice. See that? We answered that one pretty good. Perfect. Yes. No, we'll continue on, but let's talk a little bit about archery this time. Okay. What are you running this fall, Mom? I am running for my elk. Hoyt, obviously. Okay, for for elk. Okay. Specifically. Um, I have my Torx XT, mm-hmm. my Hoyt, of course. Um, I am a 27-inch draw, and my bow is about 56 pounds right now. Mm-hmm. I had tweaked it down 50. a little bit over the year. Uh, yep. And um, so I am shooting right now, I am currently shooting the 5-millimeter axis. Right. Eastern elk axis. The setup that I have, I just used in South Africa, so I know it's going to do yes. exactly what I need for elk, which mm-hmm. was the NAP Ignite broadhead on there. So it's a four-blade. Four blade. It's a two, a bigger two-blade, but it has bleeders on yep. there. And two little bleeders. I mean, the amount of trail, blood trail that I got on the animals I shot in Africa and how it put them down, I mean, that's that's my setup. I'm keeping it, and that's where I'm going. That's where I'm shooting out at the targets right now. Which is driving Ralph crazy because I'm beating up my deltas, but you know oh, it's okay. Well. <laughs> you used to that, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, why? Why? Oh, I go well. Yes. Oh, it's, you're watching my phone go, but oh, that's phone. okay. You know, it's okay. I want to make sure they're, they're last, good, and they I won't be taking though. yes, oh, yeah. and I yeah. won't be taking the same arrows to hunt with. I'm just letting you guys know I will be using <clears throat> different broadheads, new ones. Yes. Right. Yeah, not yeah. ones that yeah. I've practiced with. Yeah, I'd recommend yeah. You know, we, we have been in camps where people go, yeah, watch. And they shoot and they put it in their quiver and we're like, eee, no, 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 no. give that. It needs to be nope. sharp, 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 yeah. sharp. As sharp as you can. Nope. Sharp as you can. Yes. Okay. Right. So what are you hunting with? All right. Well, <laughs> Here we I, go. I know, I know some people are going to comment on this one. <clears throat> yes, oh, no. they are. I am shooting the Hoyt Eclipse, you know, because they, you know, everyone's, a lot of people were like, well, you know, Hoyt came out with this awesome ladies boat. It's not a ladies boat. It's a short draw it's a length. It's a short, short draw Efficient length. Efficient Do you have credible performance? I'm shooting 60 pounds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, I'm only shooting 60. Normally I'm 70 to 72 pounds. The bow is shooting, so in, it, it shoots way better than I can. You, you, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? I'm shooting an Easton Axis 5 millimeter. Why? Because we're shooting the, the blackout knocks, right. lighted knocks. We right. like, uh, you know, and you we know didn't I mean? have them in 4 millimeters. Always we'd be shooting the 4s. Yeah, yep. You know, we, we, and I know. we I, I, And a little extra grain weight, too, for that. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Brass inserts. Yep. I forgot about 50 that. My 50, my 50 grain brass yep. insert on it, too. And for the elk, I will be shooting... Again, the Ignite Fours, Mom. Yeah. Just because, and I saw the performance. You, yeah. you know what I mean? It I actually crazy. shot a couple of animals, you know, with them in Africa. Yep. I love the head. 
You, you know what I mean? And I'm shooting a little less kinetic energy because of the 60 pounds yep. instead mm -hmm. of the 72. Yep. Um, I can't say enough about that. I, I The blood trails... You know what I mean? The it I does everything the, you need it to. The, and, huh? and it does everything you need it to. Everything you need it to. Especially on an elk. And if right. you can do it on an elk, North America, you're going to Now, I will tell you, good. we are finding, you know, I, we're shooting a hair to the right. Yeah, with, compared with the, with the broadheads four. compared so to our field points. So we're tuning in. Field points. Yep. Which is why points. I'm shooting the targets yes, with the broadheads broad needing them our deltas. Yeah. So, so you know what I mean? Again, please, please. Practice. Shoot a broadhead. <laughs> yes. Learn how it flies. I don't care if every advertiser. Oh no, it shoots like your field point. Don't make take sure. That take an arrow make sure. and make absolutely sure. make sure. Make sure. Yes. So and I, and the really cool thing though about your setup is that then when we're <clears> together, <throat> something happens to one of our bows, we can just trade out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not wrong. <laughs> Look. <at it>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. just saying. My, my sentence yeah. exactly. Yeah, Leo's over here <laughs> Leo's snoring, snoring again. <laughs> Stop snoring, Leo. Uh. <laughs> so, so again, the one, I want to I want to show to everybody. You don't need the heavy poundage. No, you, you, you know, don't. Moms don't. F from day one, you, you mm -hmm. know what I mean. Aubrey, yeah. what you're, you're, you're you know you're experiencing now. Mm -hmm. You don't need the poundage. Yeah. Both are so efficient that it's yeah. that's it's right. not needed anymore. And knowing your equipment, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And and rocking it. Proper yes. placement yes. as well. That's right. So Aubrey, what are you shooting? Oh. <laughs> We're jumping in uh, Yeah, I'm shooting a Torx XT as well in the Hoyt with my five millimeters. But I switched my multi pin sight to a single movable yes, because I'm having did. issues with target panic and gap shooting. I'm just not quite well, clear. I don't know me. if it's target, but it, it was the gap shooting. And then them being at like 25 yards. And having Panics. a 20 and a 30 yep. yard like pin. A it's a distance gap, thing. Distance it's me. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like not just, knowing if you need, you want that pin on it exactly. and you can't do it in the middle. Exactly. The Kentucky windage and stuff like that. That yes. just, So the, I the agree. Range Rover, the True Blow Range yes, Rover I'm works using yes. perfect yeah. and as you're you finding in out. Yes. And right. now I can go in like five yard increments. Yep. And so mm -hmm. it's awesome. And then Hellraiser. Yes. And I pee at Hellraiser because oh, yeah. oh, I raise hell. Man, we should yeah. yeah, raise, <laughs> All right. hell. raise, raise, raise hell. hell. Raise hell. Raise hell. She's already oh, got a oh, saying yeah, for it. And we this shot a bunch happen. of critters with oh, the Hellraiser through the years. And they're cool looking. Oh, yeah. They are so cool. Awesome. Awesome. They are. I love them. They You'll are. shoot through anything and never, ever mm -hmm. see an issue with that no, product. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You guys I mean, the amount of moose time. that I've shot with the hell. Yeah, I've oh, seen yeah. photos with yeah. the I mean, I had one time. go right through a Yukon moose with it. No. Yeah. Mm -mm. So, so I yeah. shot a I got a pass through on a bull moose in Holy the Yukon. And so did I. Yeah. With the hell And the arrow was sitting in the bushes up above. Oh, fingers crossed I'll get some. So see. But I mean, seriously, when you look at it, I mean, you've been bow hunting for two years. Yes. That's it. So, I mean, that's that's pretty good. What's your what's your weight right now? 52, I think. And I'm at 25 and a half. Okay. You have an inch. I have a longer. Or half an inch And you're lefty. And I'm a lefty. What's that face for? With my apex, four finger. Go figure. Oh, yeah. Two lefties. Yeah, two lefties, two righties. Just meant for each other, you know. It's meant to happen. It was just meant to happen. It was just meant to happen. What's really cool is, you know, we're trying to adjust everyone's setups, understanding the energy. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, you you hear because we're shooting less foot foot pounds of kinetic energy. Yep. We're paying attention to our speed. We're not shooting giant or broadheads yeah. you know, right. that don't penetrate. You, yep. you, you Was that I mean? a segue into what his setup is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Take Sergeant, what's, what's your what setup? <laughs> well, insane. I'm shooting the Hoyt VTM 34 at an 80 pound draw at 31. I'm sorry, 30 <laughs> inches, not 31. I'm not that big. I'm like you're 80 um, inches long. <laughs> I've been shooting with the five mils like with you guys, mm -hmm. but I did end up getting some lighted knocks for my four mils because I love the four mils. And uh, while we were testing them, my five mils were shooting right around 290 feet per second, where my four mils are actually at 315. Who? And I know I'm definitely losing some weight there. Mm -hmm. um, I have all the calculations written down, but I don't remember it all right now. However, I'm also shooting the kill zones, and the kill zones have a two and I think five eighths cutting diameter, and that's it's huge once they open up. They fly you, just like my field energy. points. Yes. And I have, yeah. yeah. I, I'm able to because I shot my elk last year. I have shot everything pretty much everything. in the last year, two years, with the kill zones. Mm -hmm. And I've just had incredible success with them. Incredible. Especially with my draw weight and length and arrows and everything else yeah. set up. And uh, it's it's just insane the amount of blood and the blood trail that these leave yep. behind. Yep. It's, it's right. crazy. Yep. <laughs> it's just one path. 
It's well, all the one, all the critters you just shot in Africa too. Oh, just yeah. It's, oh, yeah. The, yeah. Mm-hmm. Even though it was with your five mils, but still, they're more than just fifty yards. Yep. Mm-mm, no, they dropped. <laughs> they, yeah, awesome. that spring buck took it really hard. Oh, <laughs> that oh little my gosh. thing. It was. Whew. It's a little bigger than Captain. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. Whew, that was smaller than Leo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but like you just said, that was cu- so we're all shooting, you know, 50, mm. 50 mid 50, 60, 60 yeah, mm-hmm. and then eighty. Yeah. And then you mm-hmm. have 25, 27, 27, 30. Mm-hmm. That's but I was, also, why I was getting ready. No, you're not. I am. No, you're not. I grew. You're so full of baloney. <laughs> you're so full of baloney. I was you getting grew? ready for my buffalo, though, too, at the time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So why change it? it no, I don't want to change it. it. No, you like that yeah. setup. Yeah. 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 Although I might change it if, if I get the opportunity for an elk this fall. I'll have my, I have a cow in December. But if I get a chance for a bull, I might mess around with a different broadhead just because I want to see if I can get a pass through. Fair. So what are, you gonna, never, what are you looking at? I don't know yet. I really like the end games. Oh yeah, they're cool. Just they with are the cool. pharaoh with almost like two bleeders, even though it's just oh, yeah. the extended pharaoh. Incredibly designed. Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah. those ones are cool. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. Cool. We'll see though. <laughs> uh, Lito so I guess the final thing we'll leave off with, question wise, is we're gonna start the opposite side this time with Aubrey. Oh. <laughs> and the question is, what's your what's gonna be your go to for the fall for like a shirt to a jacket? mix up like we've been running like i usually run my i have my instinct vest that i always wear with my uh vsx like lightweight stuff. shirt okay or like and your the one with the hoodie on it and yeah your okay well i'll start off with my head i like with my your head not, <laughs> my not head. A, is it a boonie hat it's yeah. a boonie oh, yeah. my little bucket hat i yes, love to wear the boonie hats. that i'll probably wear that one a lot with um my Valkyrie jacket that I absolutely love. I would agree my with you Valkyrie. on that. I love it's that jacket. It's just such jacket. a nice jacket. I love it. Yes. And then, like, my underlayers and stuff. I don't know. Fleece line pants. You put her on. You put her on. Put her on spot. Like, I, know, I guess. I don't know. My I got new snake boots, too, that yes. I'm going to be testing they look out. Cool. Yes, and they're they so are cool. cool. We we went to the meeting. We saw them firsthand. I got to try them on. And now <laughs> we have awesome. them because now they're so, on the show floor. It was <laughs> awesome. So yeah, those and my hikers and yeah, Fair that's enough. pretty much it. And that was kind of a very general question. I know it's just it's good though. Just yeah, wondering. It's yeah. good. Yeah. And and honestly, so I can actually say I'm just gonna jump in before you guys jump in there. <laughs> Sorry. Ahead. Basically, same thing. Not a boonie hat. <laughs> um, She's but out. Oh, she the same thing like the Velcry, the she Velcry jacket that and pants that match. It's, awesome. it's just a it's it's a fleece jacket <laughs> it's and quiet pants. And it's, it's quiet. quiet. The system does it's look not cool. too it hot, does. you know, and you could put layers underneath it. It's exactly. amazing. It also has a hole in the back for your um yeah, your... tree stand for mm-hmm. your harness. Mm-hmm. So I mean, you have that. You don't have to have it over your suit, and you don't have to have it coming up through your collar or anything like mm-hmm. that. But then also like because we're gonna be going elk hunting here shortly, yep. and we're not wearing that antelope hunting because mm-hmm. we would die in that because it'd be too warm. No is way. they came out with that new oasis, which is a really yeah. light. Thin yeah. clothing that we well, we hunt on hogs More and turkeys that, yeah. with yeah. this spring. Love that one. It has a hoodie too on it, so I can put it up so the bugs don't like get on the back of my neck yeah. in that hot weather. So honestly, it's almost the same thing. But I'm going full strata this this yeah. fall. Strata. More strata. That's mm-hmm. strata strata. Strata. better. It yep. is. I like VSX though. Huh? I like VSX. VSX. I I, I really I'm, like VSX. I'm sticking Pretty with sure. all the instinct stuff. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Um, one of the new fads. Again, I'm going to say <laughs> fad. You know, is you know, solid colors. Mm-hmm. You, you, you know what I mean? Yep. Um, again, uh, I like the vest. The, you know what I mean? Yeah. And the light that they, they call them the performance yeah, the shirts, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. Because then you could wear the vest the when it's real warm. You still have the light shirt. And you have all your pockets with the vest. I like the – because your range finder. <laughs> yeah. you, they do make that vest, though, that way we love. It's, it's a little bit of like a techie material. Yes. But they make it with sleeves now and a hood, I think. Oh. I'm not sure about the hood, but – that I might have to pick one of those up at the store. Yeah. And it's that it's like a prima loft, right? Uh, line, yeah, they call it a puffy yeah, jacket, a, a puffy puffer jacket, jacket or something. No, no, Did no, you no, see no. those? One, I haven't seen those. Okay, yeah. But oh, that vest I've got so much stuff the store, in. They have like, a jacket Ooh. now because mm. it, it seems so light. Yeah. So you could throw that in your pack. Uh, again, I'm still an old timer. You know what I mean? I, I love fleece too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. They, Especially nice. a little bit later in the fall. It's nice. Oh. Yeah. First thing in the morning on an elk hunt, you put your you got your performance t shirt on. Mm -hmm. You throw a little fleece over it. Oh my gosh, I'm like in heaven. I can't do that because I'll fall asleep. Yeah, I everybody here knows that. Everybody. The fleece is so light, still has an insulating factor. And they have that really light quarter zip that just you throw over. You don't even think about it. Oh yeah. Here's the question. How many of you walk into the store Bass Pro or Cabela's and you scratch the clothes? 
We got Aubrey doing it now. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. You Every go time in, you go, and you go, oh, I like you it. Listen. And you go, it's too loud. Nope, it's too loud. It's too loud. <laughs> can't, can't now, be. Now, gun hunting, you, you, you know, it, yeah. Yeah, you yeah, don't worry. You're not away, your but armpit. us bow hunters, you walk in, you're like, oh, I like that. And you go to, <laughs> you're like, oh. Well, that's for like yep. a little bit later in October. When we go to Illinois, those they have the instinct parka. Oh, my gosh. Oh, it's warm, it's oh, thick, oh. and it's so quiet. You're sleeping. Oh, oh yeah, you, he is. You especially gotta, you better, if it's you gotta knock him. Yeah, especially yeah, if yeah. you you put your hands in your Make pocket sure or if you have your nice exactly. like the new Alps bino harness where you have yeah. the hand warmer. Where the hand warmer. Put your hand yeah, in there and you just mm-hmm. cozy up against the tree. And you or, maybe throw you cheat. You throw a little hand warmer. Oh, you know, I in there. Yeah. And you <laughs> and you're, oh. Or you just take your cup of coffee with you to stand stay awake. Oh, and then your cameraman films that big buck walking past as you're. You sound like Leo over here snoring. I will tell you another because it's my day to pet peeve. Oh, my gosh. Here every go. every question Again. he's Third got about wow. Steve. I challenge anybody. Go check the instinct line. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Check, check a lot of that stuff. And then go online and look at some of these other companies. $289 yeah. for a pair of hunting pants <laughs> that Instinct has at 130 bucks. The gloves yeah. are like 50 and $60 yes, for a set of gloves. you're paying for the name. That's but all yes, you're doing. You're, you're, you're doing, paying for the you name. You want to be Gucci. Yes. So you, you, you yes. know what I mean? But there, I, I'd rather have more money to go hunting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, than what my wardrobe looks yeah, like. But, yeah, but, but you don't lose any quality. No, no. The instinct. I mean, we've no, been wearing it, it for the past two falls, I want. Yeah. and it's still none of it's broken on us. No, absolutely, it's crazy. It is. It's awesome. So, so just do your own comparisons, and when you do, you'll see what we're talking about. <laughs> Both price and yeah, yeah, effectiveness. Yeah, and yes. if you so buy a, a pair of, of boot, really nice. new boots for this Wear fall, them you should have been wearing them in all yeah. summer. You should be yeah. wearing them now. Blisters. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> all righty well i said that pretty much wraps us up then i'd say you say cool. so yeah good podcast good podcast yeah <laughs> good, good we're podcast. at about a minute or in a, a, minute, a minute an hour we're, we're in and some minute. so all this right. is yeah, gonna be one of our longer ones yeah. yeah hey bottom wow. line we sure hope everybody everyone has a great safe yes. hunting season yes. Yes. absolutely good luck god bless be you safe friends. out there and if you guys get some Send us messages. Send us photos yeah, yeah, on our photos. Facebook, Let's Instagram. Social media. Come yeah. On. Them at Ralph and Vicky on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, <laughs> threads, whatever else is out there now. Who knows? There's yeah, so many things know. changing. X. Trying to keep up with <laughs> X. 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 And then us at RJ and Aubrey on all the same all channels. The same. Um, thank you guys for watching the Choice Podcast. And we'll see you guys again next month. Hey, but be sure to like and subscribe so you know when we have new ones coming out. Exactly. Of course. And if you guys, again, are listening to this rather than watching this, we recommend you go check out our YouTube page where this will be posted and you can see all of the new the cool crazy set. sets going on. And we usually, RJ and Aubrey will post behind the scenes stuff of kind of what we're doing and getting things ready. So mm-hmm. yes. keep an eye on that as and well. And we could do more videos of Leo snoring because that's yeah. what he's doing yeah. right now. Yep. He's very... If you guys want to yes. see more of these, let us know. If you want them out of here, let us know. Cause yeah, absolutely. They're a pain in our butts. <laughs> <laughs> God bless you. Have a good one. Thank you. <laughs>